Welcome to another video. This question was sent in via email and I thought I'm just going to do it just to satisfy the sender's request. Now this is not as complicated as the other ones that we've done so I expect that my explanation will be sufficient to help you through similar questions as this one. Nothing complicated. Let's get into the video. As usual, we're going to start with the definition of the floor of X. So the floor of X is this guy and it is always less than or equal to X. And X must be strictly less than the floor plus one. So we're going to write the definition first. So we say if K is an integer and K is equal to the floor of X. That's the meaning. K has to be an integer if it is the floor of X. Then K is less than or equal to X and X is less than K plus one. This is what I always start with every time we deal with the floor function and any kind of equation. This will always be the first thing and know that k is an integer. Now, if x is an integer, then x will be equal to k. If x is not an integer, then x will be less than k. That's just the only condition that is left. Otherwise, I think we're ready to solve it. Now, this is going to be our final answer because what we're dealing with is an inequality. We're not actually looking for specific values of k, I mean of x, we're looking for a range of values because we're solving a quadratic floor inequality. So what I'm going to do now is um, go to the actual equation because I said if k is equal to the floor, I can replace whatever you see here with k. So we can easily say so. We can say k squared plus 2k minus 3 is less than or equal to 0. And you know that when you solve a quadratic equation that has the less than inequality, you can just solve the quadratic and you know your answer is going to be between the two values. I already talked about that in previous videos. So if we solve this quadratic, we notice that we're going to have, if we factor this, we'll have k plus... 3, we have k minus 1 is less than or equal to 0. That's what we have. And by this, we can easily tell that negative 3 is less than or equal to k, and k is less than or equal to 1. You can as well ignore this inequality sign and just solve it as if it's equal to solve a quadratic. You'll get two numbers, negative 3 and 1. Your answer, because this is less than, will always be between those two numbers. So it will be the smaller number on the left, the bigger number on the right. So here we are. And we're almost at our answer. Because remember, we have to go back to the definition. We have to say that recall from here that k is less than or equal to x and x is strictly less than k plus 1. So that's how we define x. And remember, this is the answer we're looking for. We just don't know what k is. And remember, k is not a specific number because we're solving an inequality. But one thing we know is negative 3 is less than or equal to k. So we can go here and just say, hey, this number, the biggest it can be, or the smallest it can be, is negative 3. And no matter what it is, it is less than or equal to x. So you might as well just go here and take this guy and put it here and say, look, if negative 3 is less than, let's assume it's less than. If negative 3 is less than k, then negative 3 is less than x because k is less than x, assuming we're strictly going with less than. But if we're going with equal to, if negative 3 is equal to k, then k 
is equal to x. The negative 3 is equal to x. So whatever you do, we can say that negative 3 is less than or equal to x. Now you go this way. Go there. Remember, k is less than or equal to 1. So definitely, k is less than or equal to 1 plus 1. So if you add 1 to k, definite, if, if x is less than k plus 1, then x has to be less than 1 plus 1. So all I'm just doing is replacing k in that equation with these two extreme values. So it's going to become 1 plus 1 so that we have negative 3 is less than or equal to x and it's less than 2. This is a solution set. So if you want to write this in interval notation, you can say it is the same thing as um, negative 3. You put this around this and you write this as 2. x is in, so we can say x is an element, okay? Um, and that's it. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.